you are given h of x is equals to 3x minus 2 and you are told to sketch the function so first and foremost you can see that the gradient equals to what the gradient equals to 3 so your function is going to be uh, in this manner okay so when you sketch any function you must find the intercept right for the y intercept um intercept you let x equals to zero right so when you let x equals to zero it's gonna be h of zero is equals to three times zero minus two so this equals to minus two so you can do it in your calculator so your y intercept is zero and minus two there is it there you guys and then the x intercept x intercept you let y equals to zero in our case you're gonna let h of x equals to zero you know what i'm saying and i always say this guys the reason we are doing that this is the y this is the x so when you say the y intercept you are looking for the value of y where the function actually cuts the y axis this is what we are looking for so at the y axis x equals to zero and then when i'm looking for the x intercept you let y equals to zero because here y equals to zero you know what i'm saying so it's going to be zero for y for h of x equals to three x minus two you guys get that okay cool and then um so it's going to be three x is equals to two so x is equals to two over three so there we have it 2 over 3 and 0 this guys is the x intercept of the graph you know what i'm saying so where the graph is actually going to cut um the x axis so well as far as linear functions are concerned i mean ah, that's all you you guys need the y axis the x axis and then remember 0 and negative 2 here and then 2 over 3 2 over 3 so you just join this it's a sketch guys after all right and then this is h of x obviously at grade 10 you're not gonna be like me you're gonna use your ruler to do all of these things what is now what is the domain of this function is there anywhere in the x that can make this function that can make the function of h of x is there any x value that can make this function undefined no so x is an element of real numbers right you can just say x remember from negative infinity until positive infinity that you can do you know what i'm saying then what about the range the range is the same y is an element of real numbers or you can represent it like this you know in this case and also if you can look guys this function if they can ask where is this function decreasing this function is not decreasing but it is increasing and then this function increases everywhere everywhere so this function is increasing going up 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 so this is an increasing function you guys know what i mean okay fine let us uh, proceed you know what i'm saying okay cool um okay guys so at this point in time i want us to look at vertical lines vertical lines so vertical lines are lines of this nature you guys get that okay cool so as far as vertical lines now guys are concerned the gradient of vertical lines is undefined why am i saying so so let's say for example um you had a, a graph maybe they say sketch a vertical line um let's say you had a three here so this was your line let's say this was your f of x for example so you've got um let's say a value here three and two even here the x here is going to be three and let's say i don't know whatever um two also now i mean three and negative two for example yeah? so now if you want to find the gradient of any function you just need two coordinates so m is equals to gonna be the change in y divided by the change in x so this is y 
2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Yeah? So y2, I am into this one, minus 2 minus y1, 2 divided by 3 minus 3. So can you guys see now that here at the denominator, at this point, we are going to get a 0. So this gradient is undefined. You know what I'm saying? And hence, vertical lines, the equation of vertical lines is just going to be x is equal to something. For example, the equation of this one is x is equal to 3, for example. That is the equation of the vertical line. And then they are all obviously like this. The value of x for a vertical line, uh, you're just going to say x is equal to something. That is going to be the equation. You know what I'm saying? And also, the domain of a vertical line, the domain, let's just use this line x is equal to 3 this one the domain of the vertical line is going to be x is an element of 3 for example that is it you know you you cannot it can't get any better than that right so the domain equals to 3 what about the range you see this function uh, uh goes down 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 without bound even this one goes up 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 so the range has not changed y is an element of real numbers or negative infinity to infinity that is the range of the function you know what i'm saying let's look also guys at horizontal lines at horizontal lines for horizontal lines guys horizontal lines okay this is the y-axis the x-axis let's say there's a line like this thing here there's a two okay? this is a horizontal line you know what i'm saying so the gradient of horizontal lines equals to zero, right? Um, so you're going to have a value here, but sorry, you're going to have a zero here, and then you're going to have a value here. So zero divided any number is equals to a zero. You know what I'm saying? So it's just going to be like this. Then the domain is going to be x, an element of real numbers, because of x exists. You know, there is no value of x that can make y undefined. What about y? y is going to be an element of whatever the value of y is here, 2. That is the, um, the range of this particular graph. You know what I'm saying? Okay, cool. So before us now, we've got f of x is equal to x, or y is equal to x. How will, um, let's say f prime. Okay, let me not use prime, because you're going to meet this in grade 12. Let's say g of x is equal to x, minus 1. What does this mean? How was the graph transformed from f of s is equal to x to x minus 1? This graph was shifted one unit downward. You know what I'm saying? So here it's a negative 1. You guys get that? What about h of x? This is g. What about h of x is x plus 2? This graph was shifted two units upward so here there is the graph here it's going to be a two so this here is h in this place right the graph has shifted two units upwards what happens now guys when we have got let's say z of x is equals to minus x right so it means that this graph was reflected here so there is it. This is z of x. You know what I'm saying? There was a reflection of the graph about the x-axis. This graph of f of x was reflected on the x-axis. Then we got this. You know what I'm saying? So that is how this happens. And also, if I can just speak about a reflection. So from um, f of x to f of minus x this is a reflection about the y-axis right this is a reflection about the y-axis but now from f of x to minus f of x this is a reflection about the x exists you know you guys know what i mean 
okay fine so let me just ask you guys now a question you know what i'm saying this is gonna be an interacting exercise whatever okay two if g of two is equals to four for example and f of x is equals to g of x plus three the question comes now what is f of two let's say you get this question maybe in your test your teacher just decides that you do not want to sort of do this so basically let's look at f of x so wherever there is um um x in f of x you put a two so this means that f of two is equals to g of x but you're gonna put now a two plus three right so what is g of two g of two is equals to four then you're gonna add a three this equals to seven do you guys get that does it ring a bell okay fine and then um number three so let's say you've got a line like this right and then here you've got two and three and then here you've got negative three and negative four for example and then they said um what is the equation of the line right so for the equation of the line you need the gradient and you need the y-intercept you know what i'm saying so basically you need to put it in this way y is equal to mx plus c so there must be the gradient and this guy right here so you just need two coordinates which you have so to find your gradient it is the change in y over the change in x so y2 minus y1 you can use any of these so let's say 3 minus 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 4 2 minus minus 3 2 minus minus 3 this is 3 plus 4 divided by 2 plus 3 that's 7 over 5 that is the gradient of this particular line you know what i'm saying and then now y is equals to 7 over 5 x plus c so in order to find the full equation you can just substitute one of these points so if i put 2 and 3 uh, so 3 here is equal to 7 over 5 then x I put a 2 then i put plus c and then i'm gonna have 3 is equal to 14 over 5 plus c right okay then i continue and then i can just multiply by 5 everywhere uh this is 15 plus 14 plus 5c is equals to right here and then i take this the other side so 15 minus 14 is equals to 5c so 1 is equals to 5c so now what is our c c equals to 1 over 5 so the full equation is y is equals to 7 over 5x plus 1 over 5 this is the equation of the line so you can play this video maybe a bit slow and then you guys can actually get as to um where this thing is actually happening all right guys so um i trust that this rings a bell and um you guys are able to grasp this fully um what is the domain of this function you see this arrow here um it, it means something you know what i'm saying it means that the function continues it continues this side and this side Do you guys get that so the domain the domain and range here it's x an element of real numbers y an element of real numbers but if there's a dot here and there's a dot here that means that that's where the function stops and that's where the function stops in actual fact i think let me just do it also let's say you had um a function like this you had three and four here you had negative three and five for example sorry and negative five right this is your y this is your x this is your zero here then uh, let me write it in blue so this means that your domain your domain is going to be x 
an element from negative 3 until 3. So this is your x, negative 3 until 3. What about your y? y is an element of, let's start from the lowest, negative 5 until 4. You know, if this, um, if you want more clarity on this, you can maybe write on the comments or email me. But that is how you normally do these things. Or maybe if in class you they gave you some questions you cannot do and you would like me to do it, just feel free to send me the questions and I'll be glad to do it for you guys. Um, do stay blessed and enjoy the rest of your day.